Now, the idea of mocking preppers probably will, at least in the Northeast, not be quite so uh, fanciful a one for cocktail conversations among the elite and those who think that they're pretty cool. Uh, this is That's a real right. deal. Did, did you have to eat yeah. any uh, uh, stored food? Oh, not at all. No, we uh, we dined. We were the most civilized place. In fact, uh, there was a in our parking lot. Eventually, the police would know you know where to stop when the patrols started again because we had everything. Uh, again, part of being prepared. And it's one of the things that I said to my neighbors who were standing there going, you know, when are the when is the uh, uh, phone company coming? When is the electric company coming? When is I said nobody's coming to help you. If you're not prepared to take care of yourself right now, yeah. then no one is coming to help you. And they so didn't have I a didn't clue. Call. They didn't have a no. clue. No, they were waiting for their emergency water. You know, <laughs> Every single facility provided by the public. So because the, the power went out, the sewage treatment plants went out, the water couldn't yes. be delivered, there were yes. the gas stations closed. And in this just-in-time economy, everyone was had nothing. So they were stuck with what they had in their homes. If they could find a candle, they lit it, and several houses burned because of that. Uh, you know, if they could find blankets to keep warm, then that's what they were forced to use, a fireplace, fireplace log, or what have you, and, and that was really the method. But people were so, are so reliant upon service and government, the 911 lines were overloaded, of course. Mm-hmm. The people with power go out, they call 911. Like, uh, what is? what do you think they're going to do? Well, they, the police officers and the firefighters and mm-hmm. all those other folks, they have families. They were without power. Where do you think they were? They were <laughs> taking care of their own things, Okay, so which this is what this, every this, responsible person should do. This validates what we've been saying for years. In a major crisis, many law enforcement and fire agency people will go home with their families. Sure. That's what, just what we've been telling people. Yeah. And here's, yeah. here's proof in the pudding, right there. Yep. Yeah. And in fact, uh, many of the public agencies said, well, if you didn't call in, if you just didn't show up for your shift, and even if you did show up for your shift and there's no gas for your vehicle, you're not going anywhere or doing anything anyway. But if you didn't call in for your shift, you're not going to get paid. You're going to be treated as, uh, you know, taking, skipping a day. Uh, that's, of course, in the wake of things. But again, the behavior... During the crisis is what we should be concerned with. Yeah, yell at them after, don't pay them after, but what do you expect? You know what it reminds me of, Jeff? The FDIC. Everyone assumes, oh, the FDIC has insurance, so you're covered up to 250000 Well, yeah, if one bank goes bad, but if all the banks go bad, you're done. And this is essentially what happened here. Right. Everything went bad at the same time, and there was nowhere near enough presence for everything to be covered. So entire neighborhoods burned to the ground because uh-huh. they couldn't get fire trucks in. Uh-huh. The trees fell on houses. Dead people stayed in their homes for days. Yeah. People, nobody came and got them. Yeah. You know, it's nothing like you see in the movies. It's in, entirely different. Now, not to depreciate what happened there in any way, shape, or form, but let's be serious. If Sandy had been a Category 2 or Category 3 mm-hmm. hurricane, mm-hmm. we're talking mm-hmm. about orders of magnitude more damage, right. more death, right. more chaos, more suffering. I have about a 15-mile line of sight uh, to the new uh, Freedom Tower, so mm-hmm. I can actually see it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I live on that first set of hills as you look outside of New York City. Everything below me, Hoboken, all the shore areas, all the, everything that was at sea level, I'm at like 700 feet. Uh-huh. Everything down there was black, cold, and wet. Wow. <laughs> the water came in, and there was... Just nothing. There was mm-hmm. miles of nothing. But had it been worse, mm-hmm. uh, as you say, I, I witnessed 70 mile an hour winds on the top of our little hill. Yeah, it mm-hmm. took down a few structures, lost a few shingles, but you know, very minimal damage. 100 miles an hour, 110, uh-huh. uh, another two feet of storm surge, yeah. and it would have easily doubled the, the damage, and, and that damage was pretty bad at the beginning. With. Oyster Creek was within. I am told six mm-hmm. inches, half a foot, yeah, of yeah, losing its power foot. to its uh, right, spent fuel pools. <laughs> right. And you can only imagine. I, I don't even want to go there because... Well, that's the end yeah, of the Northeast. That, that would, that, look, that's much. Fukushima yeah. all over, and it yeah. could have been worse. Well, yeah, exactly. And, oh, and, and it was that yeah. close. And, of course, we're hearing in the aftermath how close we were to various things. But they're, the raw sewage, Jeff, uh, Jeff I don't want to be... <laughs> 
graphic here, but you know, once the sewage plants overflowed, then there mm-hmm. was absolutely no water treatment at all, and it, they were just dumping it. It was just dumping into the ocean, into the bays, into the rivers that mm-hmm. surround the region. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not a not a pretty picture. And then now to have that is what washed into people's homes, uh, combined with the oil from the refineries that were shut down. Oh, even worse. So this was not yeah. pleasant pleasant seawater. Okay, I get it. No, no. No. Wow. In fact, the, the, the little nor'easter almost seems like a blessing because at least we had a little clean water to wash off some of the residues still on the roads and sidewalks and things. This is uh, remarkable. We didn't, I didn't, Andy, I didn't hear anything at all relating to what you've just reported. Nothing. <laughs> well, the reporters, you know, had a tendency to go to the areas where there's no one left. You know, everyone's evacuated. Oh, yeah, they uh, want the most but, graphic uh, scenes to right. work with. Sure. But in the pockets where they, you know, the houses were still intact, people uh-huh. were still in them, mm-hmm. uh, you simply had no power, no gas, no batteries, <laughs> no banks, no cash. Mm-hmm. You're just living like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they didn't cover that at all. That didn't mm-hmm. deserve coverage. But the dramatic washed out, you know, gone, burned down neighborhoods, yeah, we'll go in and look at that. And it's all about what people are giving, what they're giving, what they're giving, and not so much the self-sufficient in the crowd that didn't right. ask for anything. Now, you, I gather from what you said, you were actually trying to take care of people with some of your stash, your food. Oh, goodness, yeah. We gave away the majority of what we had. I recognize wow. that this was a temporary event. Yeah, you so can restock, sir. So open the emergency stores, yeah. Well, you deserve to be the subject of a real TV news story for one of those stations. <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm not joking. Yeah, uh, my little band of merry men, I, I don't want to take credit by myself, but we did okay. a rescue mission in the, yeah. It was yeah, this is uh, as it should be. Well, when we come back, I want to talk about the looting aspect of it and how critical mm-hmm. it is for uh, people to have uh, defensive uh, firearms uh, to protect their family, their loved ones, their children, uh, their businesses. This is crucial. I did see some pictures. One guy actually had a, a, a bow and arrow uh, set up. So uh, hold on. We'll be right back with Andy Goss. This is, this is the truth for all of us on the outside of what happened on the inside. All right? Uh, you couldn't get a good picture of it, the taste of it, the feel of it from the TV news folks. They just, they just didn't grasp it. We're hearing the truth now. And much indebted to Andy for that. 